Hey there, good morning everybody. It is Sunday, the 29th of November, 7.18 in the morning. We are finishing up the book of Jonah today. We'll be in Jonah chapter number four, so if you want to turn your Bibles there, <clears throat> I'll give you a minute to do it. To recap the last three chapters briefly, God told a man named Jonah to preach to a city called Nineveh, which was very wicked, and Jonah didn't like those Ninevites very well. <clears throat> and so he decided to run instead of obey. He gets in a boat to go to a city called Tarshish, and on the way, a storm brews up. The people on the boat realize that God's causing the storm because of somebody on the boat. Jonah confesses it's him. They throw him overboard. He gets swallowed by a whale. For three days and three nights, he contemplates his situation, finally repents, tells God that he's sorry for running from him and disobeying him, and that he will obey if God will allow him. So God brings the whale to the shore. He vomits Jonah up on the shore, and uh, my goodness, I'm just visualizing some of this and thinking what it must have been like for Jonah. And then yesterday we read that he went to Nineveh. He began to preach that God would destroy the city in 40 days if they didn't repent. And then to his dismay and the Lord's pleasure, the whole city repented from the king all the way down to the lowliest. They fasted, they put on sackcloth, and they got their hearts right with God. And so this book finishes today <clears throat> with Jonah's response to uh, the city getting right with God. So let's go ahead and pray, and we'll look at it. Father, we love you, and we're asking your blessing on our reading this morning. Thank you for the lessons that we've derived from this book, and I pray today that you'd help us with this final one. It's a big one, and sometimes one we stumble over. Please give us wisdom and help us today. In Christ's name, amen. All right, Jonah chapter 4, verse number 1. <clears throat> and we did read this verse for the humor of it, and it is a bit humorous. At the same time, we find ourselves here, and we'll talk about that. So the whole city repents, and because of that, God forgives. How does Jonah respond? It displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. So people getting right with God makes Jonah angry. Now, it's not that people were getting right with God. It's who was getting right with God, and it's that God forgave them. Verse 2, And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying? When I was yet in my country, therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God, and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repentest thee of the evil. So Jonah says to the Lord, didn't I tell you this was going to happen, God? You know, if you sent me there and I preached, these people would repent and you'd forgive them. Because you're a gracious God and a merciful God and slow to anger uh, and great kindness. And you repent yourself of the evil that you think to do to others in the form of judgment. And so this is hilarious to me uh, how Jonah is upset because God is so gracious and merciful. Here's a thought, Jonah. Were it not for God's mercy and grace, he would have destroyed you. He would have taken it out on you. And let's get into this right away. Having a conversation with Shannon about this very thing yesterday. Some people <clears throat> believe that they're just not as bad as others. Some people believe they're not as sinful as others. Uh, some people believe that they're not in as great a need of mercy as others are. And the reality is <clears throat> every person has sinned against God. Now, earthly speaking, some sins are worse than others, but not in the eyes of God. Sin is a transgression of the law, whether you transgress it in a what we would consider a minor part or what we would consider a major part. But God says, when it comes to my obedience, uh, sin is sin. And if you break the law, you're guilty of all. That's what the book of James says. And so here, Jonah is revealing his self-righteousness. Here, he's revealing that he thinks he's better than these Ninevites. Sure, he's worthy of God's mercy and grace, but these people aren't. And so we need to be careful of our prejudices and uh, thinking that, some people don't deserve God's forgiveness while others do. 
And uh, because the fact is, none of us are worthy or deserving. But because God is a gracious, merciful God who is slow to anger, then we all are able to be forgiven. Verse number three. Therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me. For it is better for me to die than to live. So now Jonah wants to die. This is the biggest pity party uh, I think I find in the Bible. Now, um, Elijah had something similar, but Elijah's was was depression after a big battle, and, and he was fatigued mentally, physically, emotionally. But here... He, Jonah's just mad that God forgave people, and uh, it's a bit different, but he wants to die. God, just kill me. And because you're willing to forgive these people, I find my life not worth living. And then look at verse 4. And Man, this is good. I think I'm going to be preaching on this soon in church. Then said the Lord, doest thou well to be angry? What that question is, is saying, if we could put it in our vernacular today, how is being angry helping you? What is your bad attitude doing for you? You know, this, this little tantrum you're throwing, what are you getting out of this? And that's a good question to ask ourselves. So many times we get riled up. We get angry, maybe even furious, and, and we want to see something happen, or we want to see something change. Yeah, how's that going for you? How is being worked up constantly, constantly angry and frustrated, how's that, how's that working out for you? You know, how about let some of that go? How about let go of that anger, that bitterness, that rage? Because let's be honest with you, you're not doing a lot to change anything. And some of these things are completely out of your control. Right now in the United States, everybody's worried about this election. Oh, the votes need to be counted and every vote counts. And oh, they all were counted. And you're just trying to steal the election. Who's trying to steal? You're trying to... And I'm watching people argue online about this, neither of which have any ability to do anything about it. What's going to happen is going to happen. And your little peon citizenry is not going to change a thing. I know that's pretty, that's almost just uh, dark in its its approach, but that's reality, man. Uh, I mean, you'd have to completely upend your entire life if you even wanted to begin to start making a change, and I'm not sure that that's going to happen. Some of these things, why don't you just give it to God and let God do what he's going to do? And that's what happens here with Jonah. He, he turned it over to the Lord, but he didn't like what God did. And so he's throwing a fit about it. Verse 5. So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city and there made him a booth and sat under it in the shadow till he might see what would become of the city. So Jonah leaves the city and now he finds this tree and he goes and sits under it and he's going to wait there because he wants to see what happens. You know, I'm sure he's smarter than God. That's what he thinks. And he knows that God's wasting his time with these people. They're just going to go back to the way they were before. And uh, he's going to be there to say, see, God, I told you so. Because we all know Jonah's smarter than God, don't we? Of course, that's the attitude we take. See, Jonah's not happy that God's happy. Jonah's unhappy that God's happy. And that seems to be a bit ridiculous, doesn't it? You know what? Get on the same page with God and learn to accept the things you cannot change. Verse 6, And the Lord God prepared a gourd and made it to come up over Jonah, that it might be a shadow over his head, to deliver him from his grief. So Jonah was exceeding glad of the gourd. See, this is how God's goodness and mercy extends. Jonah's angry that God's being merciful to the Ninevites. Now Jonah's receiving God's mercy in the form of this gourd. God allows this gourd to grow. I don't know what it was, a pumpkin? I don't know. And uh, it grows and it provides a shade for Jonah. And Jonah says, man, I'm really glad that that gourd is there doesn't even acknowledge that God gave him the gourd, that God allowed the gourd to grow. <clears throat> Verse 7, but God prepared a worm. When the morning arose the next day, 
and it smote the gourd that it withered. So God gives Jonah this gourd, and then he puts a worm in it so that it devours the gourd, and the gourd dies. So God gave the gourd, and he also gave the worm to destroy the gourd. You know, sometimes God gives you a blessing, and then sometimes God takes that blessing back away. He did that with Job, didn't he? The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Verse number 8. And it came to pass, when the sun did rise, that Jonah prepared a vehement east wind. And the sun, I'm sorry, that God, I was going to say, why, how did Jonah prepare a wind? That God prepared a vehement east wind. And the sun beat upon the head of Jonah that he fainted and wished in himself to die and said, it is better for me to die than to live. So here's what God is trying to teach Jonah through all of this. Look, God is good to every man. God is gracious and merciful, merciful and willing to forgive every man. And he wants to, to help man understand that God is the source of this goodness. And so God does that for the Ninevites, which makes Jonah angry because he believes that God shouldn't be good to them. He should only be good to him and his people. And so God prepares this gourd and then he allows it to die to show Jonah that he's in charge of establishing blessings and having blessings removed. So now Jonah, he's not being blessed by the gourd that God gave him. And so he's, he's angry and he just wants to die again. Verse 9, and now God tries to work on Jonah's heart. God said to Jonah, doest thou well to be angry for the gourd? So that's that same question again. Doest thou well to be angry? What are you getting out of this? You're a very angry man, Jonah. In fact, I'll tell you, that that's probably a good direction to take the study on Jonah. Uh, you know, how angry people perceive the world and the hand of God and how God deals with them. Oh, and he said, I do well to be angry, even unto death. So, Jonah... <laughs> Now you almost feel sorry for this dumb bunny, don't you? Uh, Jonas, you know, I'm glad that I'm angry and I wish I would die. Verse 10, then said the Lord, thou hast had pity on the gourd for the which thou hast not labored, neither madest it grow, which came up in a night and perished in a night. And should not I spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein are more than six score thousand persons that got, uh, cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle. He says, Jonah, you, you have to realize you care more about this gourd than you care about these people. You know, this gourd showed up one day and disappeared the next, but it meant more to you than all of these people. So what do we have here? Six score thousand persons. So what's six score? Score is 20. So six score is 120,000. So 120,000 people that cannot discern between their right hand and the left. So we're talking about children there, kids that don't know yet which is left, which is right. And uh, so what are we going to say? They're toddlers, one-year-old, two-year-old, three-year-old, maybe four-year-olds. I don't know. It's been a long time since my kids didn't know that. And uh, so You've got uh, 120,000 children. So this is a large city, isn't it? You're probably looking at uh, 750,000 people, maybe, maybe 500,000. Uh, but it's a large city. And God's saying, shouldn't I care about these half a million people? You know, they're they're here and uh, they're, they're, there's a, a, a lot of uh, history here in this city. If they're willing to repent, shouldn't I accept that repentance? You've had more pity on a gourd. Then you have all these people. And he's trying to teach Jonah his own heart. And we ought to have the heart of God. And we ought to seek to have the heart of God. Man, I could talk some more, but I got to get out of here. It's 7.33. I got a prayer drive to take. And then I got to get to church early, teach Sunday school, preach the morning service, and then run the bus route in the afternoon, and then teach Sunday school, and then preach the evening service, and then run the bus route again, and then get home late at night. So I shouldn't have even taken time for all that. I got to go. Hey, like, love, share the post, please. God bless you. Have a good Lord's Day. If you're local, come see us, 5458 Fenton Road. If you're not local, you can catch us online.
Have a great Lord's Day.